Hi and welcome to my channel where I like to tie in food with a little bit of garden and a little bit of farm. never visited my channel before, welcome. If you have been here before and watched some of my videos, I'm glad you're back. Today, I'm going to be opening my Everwild Farms seed order with you. They're a company that supplies organic seeds, open pollinated seeds, they do herbs, vegetables, they also have native wildflowers and all kinds of annuals. I had so much selection it was hard to decide, but I'm pretty excited about what's in this box. I'm just gonna pull these out. I think it was really killing Jacob that I haven't opened this yet. <laughs> I've had it for, let's see, three weeks now, maybe four, and I haven't opened it because I've been saving it till I record this video, so. Three packages. I'll show you my seed organizational system now. I got this idea from my friend Kelly Pugliano of eatpigs.com and also the sconeblog.com. Her daughter was organizing her seeds and she gave me this idea. I kind of like it. It's a case that I bought at Hobby Lobby and then it just has individual cases for each of the types of seeds. So my lettuce is in here. I have a few different varieties. You can fit quite a few seed pockets. In this, it works really well. So this is Cracker Jack African Marigold. Look at the packaging on this. It's a resealable Mylar zip packet. It tears off and then you can open it up and reseal it. I love it. I love it. I like to plant marigolds around my tomatoes and pepper plants. I like to think they help with pests, things that are gonna go after my vegetables and they make it pretty too. Oh, my favorite. California Giants Zinnia seeds. I am going to plant zinnias all the way around the perimeter of my garden, except on one side. On the back side, I'm gonna do sunflowers, but last year I had a whole fence line of zinnias. They're so colorful and they're so beautiful. They pretty much maintain themselves. I mean, if you cut them, they'll keep blooming. Well, I cut them and make bouquets in the house, and sometimes I take bouquets to family or bouquets to family or friends. But I just love zinnias. Camilla zinnia. So that's what that is. Another zinnia. And right here is one of those sunflowers I was talking about that I'm gonna put on the back side of my garden. This one gets about seven feet. That's gonna be a pretty tall sunflower. It's gonna be gorgeous. So I'm of a mind that you don't have to plant that many seeds to get a good crop. Last year I think I had maybe six cucumber plants, but they were in a very small area and they provided all the pickles we needed. So this year I think I'm going to do about the same. I ordered this National Pickling Cucumber. It's supposed to be really good for pickles. And I'm gonna be making dill pickles, bread and butter pickles, maybe some sweets, we'll see. This is a green flesh honeydew melon. I'm not gonna have too many melons because they take a lot of space. Okay, this is for the kitties on the farm. I ordered some catnip. I'm gonna try to grow it in a few couple different spots. I was thinking maybe one of my tubs so they can go out there and, you know, kind of go crazy over the catnip. This one is a jewel nasturtium. They're supposed to attract bees as well, so that could be kind of fun. Okay, this is a giant Belgian pink heirloom tomato. I'm hoping to have tomatoes to eat and tomatoes to uh, can. And I wanna make some sauce as well, so. Another one was this Goldie heirloom tomato. A lot of the seeds I ordered are heirloom or open pollinated so that 
I can then save seeds from the vegetables and keep going, keep it more sustainable. This is a green zebra heirloom tomato. I just wanted to try this one because it looked interesting. We are big tomato fans, tomato sandwiches, tomato soup, tomatoes in our salad, tomatoes and cottage cheese. This one is more for sauce, Italian Roma heirloom tomato. I'm kind of excited to try that one. That's a Rio Grande heirloom tomato. I think I got this one for sauce. It, I think it's a smaller tomato. This is a Lincoln Shell garden pea. I wanted to try growing some peas and see how we like it. I know it's a lot of work shelling them, so eventually if we decide we wanna grow more, we may have to buy a sheller. All right, this is a Hearts of Gold melon. I picked out cantaloupe that looked like they would be sweet and flavorful. Nice four pound melons, packed with delicious thick flesh that is orange in color. Boy, this wind is killer, I'll tell ya. This one is for Jaden. He likes okra, emerald okra. Dwarf petunias, they attract hummingbirds. And I like to have petunias in pots, especially hanging pots, so. This one is a purple top verbane or verbena. These are also good for attracting butterflies, especially monarchs. This is an autumn beauty sunflower. And then this is a velvet queen sunflower. This one is a Mexican sunflower. We grew these when we lived in Arkansas and they were beautiful. And they attract a lot of butterflies and hummingbirds and bees. And this is a mammoth sweet pea. Um, I remember my mom growing these growing up. They get pretty tall, 60 inches. And I remember we grew them on the fence line. I like growing this in my pots and my tubs. It's the Al it's purple allison. I grow the white allison as well. This is a hybrid. I got serendipity hybrid sweet corn. It has a tender crisp texture and sugary enhanced long sugar holding capacity of the super sweet types is what it says. It says that combination is a winner. Got a couple different kinds of peppers here. First I got the chocolate beauty sweet pepper. And then uh, this is a tomato, the yellow brandywine heirloom tomato. I love yellow tomatoes for slicing. So, so good. The Amana orange heirloom tomato, another yellow. And then the sweetie heirloom tomato. Grows clusters of small one ounce tomatoes that are very sweet and can be eaten fresh or made into juice and preserves. It's golden Jubilee heirloom tomato, another yellow. I do like the lower acid tomatoes because they're easier on your stomach. Contender green bush bean. I went with both bush beans and whole beans. I also have the Blue Lake green bush bean because last year I didn't have a lot of good luck with my I didn't have a lot of success with my pole beans. I got a few, I mean, I got a few meals out of them, but nothing worth calling home about. Um, my bush beans, on the other hand, highly productive. I just don't like growing bush beans, but um, I got them in case my pole beans don't do well. So I'm gonna grow, probably grow both. This is another bush bean. It's the Landreth Stringless Green Bush Bean. I don't know if I remember ordering that one. I wonder if that's an extra one they threw in. No, nope, I'm guessing I did order it. Hmm, I don't remember ordering that one. It's a very popular stringless green bean, similar to the burpee. Talking of pole beans, I got Kentucky Blue. I grew Kentucky Blue growing up, so I'm hoping to can a lot of green beans. This year, I think we had 50 quarts, 50 plus quarts of green beans, so. This is Sensation Tall Cosmos, another flower that Jacob was wanting. And this is the yellow Allison that I was talking about. That golden, that's gonna be so pretty in some of the pots and tubs that we plant. I love hollyhocks. I wish I could grow them all around my chicken coop, but I'm not sure how they would survive. I, I do have a couple planted in my garden now, and I'm hoping to plant some more around the place, and even in the garden, so. I like doing a mix of flowers and vegetables in the garden. This is the green arrow garden pea. Here's a couple melons that I got. Crimson sweet watermelon, and then sugar baby. I remember growing sugar baby growing up. Broadleaf sage, an herb that we could grow. We could even dehydrate it and have our own 
our own sage supply. I love making tomatillo enchiladas. So I'm growing this organic purple tomatillo, the delicious 51 melon. That's another cantaloupe. Yummy, 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 yummy. This is the spooky pumpkin. It's a cross of sugar pie and jack-o'-lantern. I also got the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. I was hoping to grow some pumpkins for pie so I can can some, and then also uh, jack-o'-lantern pumpkins so we can grow our own Halloween pumpkins. Mary Washington asparagus. Asparagus is something I want to experiment with because I wouldn't mind growing it in larger quantities and selling it and then being able to put that money away for later on in life. Um, it's something that I want to experiment with. I have never grown asparagus myself. My grandpa did, my dad did. So we're gonna give it a try. My family loves eating it, so. The Garden Sweet Burpless, this is a hybrid cucumber. It's one of the few hybrids that I got. Um, this is the Wisconsin SMR 58 cucumber. This one is supposed to be great for pickling. The Garden Sweet Burpless is sweet, non-bitter, and nearly acid-free, which the non-bitter is one reason I bought it. Last year, my cucumbers, I had a hard time with some of them. Uh, you, If you ate the ends, they would be very, very bitter. Um, and even some of the cucumbers all down through the middle were bitter, so I'm hoping for a sweeter cucumber this year. Okay, this is another marigold, sparky French marigold. This one only grows 10 inches tall. The African ones, they grow 30 inches tall, so that one's a little bit shorter. Sunray heirloom tomato, high yields on indeterminate vines, and the rich flavor and meaty texture make these perfect for fresh eating or sauces. I got the Anaheim chili hot pepper and the small red chili hot pepper. And then I got the Sunbright sweet pepper and the sweet banana sweet pepper so a few different types of peppers tender sweet orange watermelon this one is supposed to be really delicious it has orange flesh high sugar content um, grow about 18 inches long and weigh about 35 pounds when they reach maturity so I'm excited to try that one I remember eating orange tomatoes when I was a kid but it's been a really long time since I've had one Okay, this is another pumpkin. I believe this was a pie pumpkin, the small sugar pumpkins. Perfect for canning and pies. So I'm hoping to can my own pumpkin for pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving. So that is my, my seed haul. It's a lot of seeds to organize. I don't know, do you think I can fit them all in the case? We'll see. Well, thank you for being here with me today and going through my seeds with me. If you want to know more about Everwild Farms, you can look them up at everwild.com. It's Everwild with an E. They are not paying me to make this video. That's just where I ordered my seeds from this year. See what they have. See if they have something that interests you and that you can grow in your own garden. Until next time, I'll see you later.